went from 550 to 6 as like, you know how we I would like to call the college a complex system order. I would like to call the college a complex system order. Please, we'd like to call the College of Complexes to order tonight. My name is uh, Tim. I'll be uh, kind of moderating tonight as well as filming. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we'll have a brief announcements period. Second, we'll then have our speaker who will speak tonight. Then we will have our uh, question period. And then at the end of our question period, we'll have our infamous rebuttal period where you'll be able to comment or not comment on what the speaker is speaking about tonight. My name is Tim. The College of Complexes consists of the following two rules. One is one fool at a time, and the second is no personal attacks. Oh, yeah. Well, Charlie, we know, you're, we know you like to consider yourself exempt, but uh, not tonight. And uh, now I'd like to introduce, since the announcements are over with, I'd like to introduce the Libertarian Party platform from the Libertarian Party of Chicago, Justin Tucker's the chair. As libertarians, we seek a world of liberty, a world in which all individuals are sovereign over their own lives, and no one is forced to sacrifice his or her own values for the benefits of others. Let's welcome Jason Tucker. Justin. Uh, sorry. Um, my name is Justin. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I'm chair of the Libertarian Party of uh, Chicago. I want to thank the College of Complexes for hosting me again. Uh, and I'm honored to be back. Uh, I'm currently a writing candidate for the 4th Illinois House District. I'm running on a platform of reforming pensions, cutting taxes and regulations. Ending drug prohibition, reforming criminal justice, and giving Cook County statehood. So if you live in the 4th Illinois House District, please write in Justin Tucker. Or if you don't, feel free to write in Justin Tucker anyway. Uh, something big has happened since the last time I spoke here. Uh, last time uh, we were collecting signatures uh, to get our candidates on the ballot. And I'm pleased to report that Cash Jackson, Sanj Mohip, Bubba Harsey, Steve Duttner, Claire Ball, and Mike Lahaney are going to be on the ballot this November. So if you sign a petition, thank you. Uh, I ask you please give uh, your vote to our candidates. And that's because we actually represent an actual challenge to the status quo here in Illinois. Libertarian Party slated candidates are the sensible non-billionaires uh, in this election cycle. Uh, again, those candidates, Cash Jackson for Governor, Sanj Mohit for Lieutenant Governor, Bubba Harsey for Attorney General, Steve Duttner for Se Secretary of State, Claire Ball for Comptroller, Mike Lahaney for Treasurer. Uh, you can also meet Cash Jackson at our next Libertarian Party Chicago meeting. It'll be this Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. We meet at the Piggery on Irving Park Road, just west of Ashland. So that's 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Meet Cash Jackson. I'm here this evening to discuss the platform of the Libertarian Party, uh, specifically the current platform we just amended uh, in New Orleans at our last convention. Uh, I, laid, uh, I laid at least one copy down on most tables. Uh, fortunately, I do not have any more. But uh, if you have at least a copy, please try to share if you can. Uh, when I prepared this talk, I used the website lpedia.org, which is the Libertarian Party wiki, as a reference. I'm also indebted to Karen Ann Harlos, who's our newly elect elected secretary of the Libertarian Party National Committee. She has a presentation on the party statement of principles, and it was an excellent uh, introduction to what the Libertarian Party uh, principles are all about. If you search the Libertarian Party Statement of Prince on YouTube, you'll be able to find her talk. And I would congratulate Karen Ann on becoming the secretary. Now, the platform is divided into three main parts. It's divided into the preamble, the statement of principles, and the platform planks. Uh, let me skip over the preamble uh, for now and begin with the statement of principles. We, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the cult of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. 
We hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live in whatever manner they choose as long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal right of others to live in whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, all political parties other than our own grant to government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. We, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these things and hold that where governments exist, they must, not, they must not violate the rights of any individual, namely one, the right to life. Accordingly, we support the prohibition of the initiation of physical force against others. Two, the right to liberty of speech and action. Accordingly, we oppose all attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form. And three, the right to property. Accordingly, we oppose all government interference with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, and eminent domain, and support the prohibition of robbery, trespass, fraud, and misrepresentation. Since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in areas, in areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another as free traders. And the resultant economic system, the only one compatible with the protection of individual rights, is the free market. <coughs> The original, state, uh, the original <clears throat> statement of uh, principles was drafted by John Hospers, who was the first Libertarian Party presidential nominee. He taught philosophy at the University of Southern California and was chair of their philosophy department. He was also the first, man, uh, the first gay man that we know about to get an electoral vote, as he was as open as one could be in that time period. The original version uh, of the statement of principles Statement of Principles appeared in June 72 at the first Libertarian National Convention in Denver and was amended to its current form at the second convention in Dallas, Texas. To give you an example of how it changed, let me give you a passage from the original wording. <coughs> Since government has only one legitimate function, the protection of individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. Men should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another as free traders on a free market and the resultant economic system, the only one compatible with the protection of man's rights is laissez-faire capitalism. Um, so I had just previously read the statement of principles just moments before I read that. One of the things they changed were they, they they made the language gender neutral. They changed uh, free market, ca or excuse me, laissez-faire capitalism to the free market, and they gave a negative uh, view of government rights. So things that government should not do, as opposed to what government should do. So the anarchists and the small government libertarians like John Hospers, uh, in 1974, they fine-tuned the language that was satisfactory to both those wings, and this has become uh, part of what we now know as the Dallas Accord. Per the LP bylaws, quote, the statement of principles affirms the philosophy upon which the Libertarian Party is founded, by which it is still sustained, and through which liberty shall prevail. The enduring importance of the Statement of Principles requires that it may be amended by a vote of seven-eighths of all registered delegates at a regular convention. So that means it's very, very difficult to change the Statement of Principles once they established uh, the final version of it. It's almost impossible to get seven-eighths of the people in a convention or to even have quorum, uh, which seven-eighths. All, sell, all state affiliates must adopt the Statement of Principles if they wish to be recognized by the Libertarian Party National Committee. The Statement of Principles is also used by the, by the Judiciary Committee to strike down platform planks or resolutions at convention that contradict the Statement of Principles. Now let me go back to the preamble. 
The original preamble from the 1971 temporary platform was replaced by the Statement of Principles. The current preamble was adopted at the 1985 convention in Phoenix and has appeared before the Statement of Principles before, uh, before the Statement of Principles ever since. Quote, as libertarians we seek a world of liberty, a world in which individuals are sovereign over their own lives and are not forced to sacrifice their values for the benefit of others. We believe that respect for individual rights is the essential precondition of a free and prosperous world. That force and fraud must be banished from human relationships. That, the only, that only through freedom can peace and prosperity be realized. Consequently, we defend each person's right to engage in any activity that is peaceful and honest. And welcome the diversity that yeah, freedom brings. Minute, the, the world we seek to build is one where the individuals are free to follow their own dreams and their own ways, without interference from government or any authoritarian power. In the following pages, we set forth our basic principles and enumerate various policy stands derived from those principles. These specific policies are not our goal, however. Our goal is nothing more nor less than a world set free in our lifetime. And as to this end, we make these stands. According to Secretary Karen Ann Harlos, uh, describing uh, where the, pre the new preamble came from, the story seems to be that it was intended to be put before the Statement of Principles on the platform to soften the blow of the Statement of, of Principles. While others say no, it's just a natural addition to the Statement of Principles. The planks had ways to get there, and the preamble is the lofty version. According to LPEDIA.org, it is alleged that the preamble was originally put into the platform in 1984 in order to keep the Statement of Principles from being the first thing newcomers can newcomers would read. So uh, there's no bylaw that that requires the preamble. They just wrote it, and it's been there ever since. Now to go on with the platform planks. Um, the first thing we discuss is self-ownership. Basically, you own your body. Individual, individuals, groups, governments cannot trespass on your bodily property. And you can do what you want with your body uh, as long as you don't, um, as long as you don't violate the rights of others. When it comes to expression and communication, quote, we support full freedom of expression and impose government censorship, regulation, or control of communications, media, and technology. We favor the freedom to engage in or abstain from religious activities that do not violate the rights, violate the, the rights of others. We oppose government actions which either aid or attack any religion. When it comes to privacy, quote, libertarians advocate individual privacy and government transparency. We are committed to any government's practice of spying on somebody. So as far as I can tell, the Libertarian Party is the only, plat is the only party that will protect the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. With regards to personal relationships, quote, sexual orientation, preference, gender, or gender identity should have no impact on the government's treatment of individuals, such as in current marriage, child custody, adoption, immigration, or military service laws. So basically, get the government out of the bedroom of consenting adults. Regarding abortion, get the government out of abortion. Uh, this plank uh, is constantly trying to be repealed by, by uh, factions within the LP, and every year they keep it in. So the abortion plank seems to be safe. Regarding parental rights, Parents and other guardians have the right to raise their children according to their own standards and beliefs, provided that the rights of children be free from abuse and neglect are also protected. Regarding crime and justice, government force must be limited to the protection of the rights of individuals to life, liberty, and property, and governments must never be permitted to violate these rights. Laws should be limited in their application of violations of rights of others through force or fraud, or to uh, deliberate or to deliberate actions that place others involuntary, involuntarily at significant harm or risk. So basically, we, we, uh, the government's there just to protect rights, so that means we also want to end uh, nonviolent crimes. 
We believe in restitution uh, for the criminal or the uh, negligent wrongdoer. We believe in fair trials, and we want to end plea bargaining. Regarding the death penalty, quote, we oppose the, admi the administration of the death penalty by the state, end quote. That's all our uh, platform says about the death penalty. Nice, short, and sweet. Regarding self-defense, the only legitimate use of force is, the defense of in, is in the defense of individual rights, life, liberty, and justly acquired property against aggression. So that means that the Libertarian Party uh, believes in uh, the right to own guns and protect yourself. Um, Shoot up the <laughs> No. Uh, or at least we have somebody there to shoot back. Uh, so, you know, that means we, we you know, have at it with the guns, have at it with the ammo. We support 3D gun printers. That's how much we support self-defense. Regarding economic liberty, uh, liberta regarding property and contract, uh, we respect property rights. So, uh, that means we'd be opposed to ideologies that that uh, are for that are that don't recognize property rights. So, um, and also within that, we uh, to quote the platform: eminent domain, civil asset forfeiture, governmental limits on profits, government production mandates, and governmental controls on prices of goods and services including wages, rents, and interest, are, abriv are abridgment, abridgments of such fundamental rights to property and contract. Regarding the environment, quote, competitive free markets and private property rights stimulate the technological innovations and behavioral changes requir required to pr protect our environment and ecosystems. Private landowners and conservation groups have a vested interest in maintaining natural resources. Governments are unaccountable for damage done to our environment and have a terrible track record when it comes to environmental protection. And libertarians also believe that pollution is a violation of property rights and it's a trespass. Um, so, don't listen to Charlie back there. Uh, regarding uh, energy and resources, quote, we oppose all government control of energy pricing, allocation, and production. Uh, in regards to government spending and finance, all persons are entitled to keep the fruits of their labor. We call for the repeal of the income tax, the, the, ab, the abolishment of the Internal Revenue System Service, and all federal programs and services not required under the U.S. Constitution. We oppose any legal requirements forcing employers to serve as tax collectors. We support any initiative to reduce or abolish any tax and oppose any increase on any taxes whatsoever. Regarding government debt, government should not incur debt which burdens future generations without their consent. We support the passage of a balanced budget amendment to the U.S. Constitution, provided that the budget is balanced exclusively by cutting expenditures and not by raising taxes. Regarding government employees, we favor repealing any requirement that one must join or pay dues to a union as a condition of government employment. We advocate replacing defined benefit pensions with defined contribution plans. It is commonly offered in the private sector so as not to impose debt on future generations without their consent. That is why. Regarding uh, money and financial markets, we favor free market banking and unrestricted competition among banks and depository institutions of all types. Markets are not actually free unless fraud is vigorously combated. We support a halt to, infl to inflationary monetary policies and unconstitutional late legal tender laws. Regarding market freedom, libertarians support free markets. Government should not compete with private enterprise. Regarding licensing, we oppose occupational and other licensing laws that infringe on this right or treat it as a state-granted uh, privilege. We encourage certi certifications by voluntary associations of professionals. Uh, regarding sex work, 
Uh, this is actually one that we passed at our uh, last convention. Libertarian Party supports the decriminalization of prostitution. We assert the right of consenting adults to provide sexual services to clients for compensation and the right of clients to purchase sexual services from consenting sex workers. As far as labor markets, separation of unions, union and state, uh, you know, we, uh, boss and workers can negotiate contracts without government interference and I believe strikes to be a free market tactic. Um, with education, education is best provided by the free market. We will restore authority to parents to determine the education of their children without interference from government. Parents should have control of and responsibility for all funds ex uh, expended for their child's education. Regarding health care, we support a free market health care system. So that means that libertarians support uh, picking the health services that you want, the treatments you want, uh, you choose, not the state. Regarding retirement and income security, the proper and most effective source of help for the poor is the voluntary efforts of private groups and individuals. We believe members of society will become even more charitable and, and civil society will be strengthened as government reduces its activity in this realm. Regarding national defense, we support the maintenance of a, of a sufficient military to defend the United States against aggression. The United States should both avoid entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as a policeman for the world. We oppose any form of compulsory national service. Uh, regarding internal security and individual rights, basically uh, the state must not violate your rights when it's gathering intelligence or uh, so it means they don't spy and that we don't torture no cruel and unusual punishments uh, while gathering intelligence regarding international affairs american foreign policy should should seek an america at peace with the world our foreign policy should emphasize defense against attack from abroad and enhance the likelihood of peace by avoiding foreign entanglements we should in the U.S. Uh, in the current U.S. government policy of foreign intervention, including military and economic aid. Regarding free trade and migration, we support the removal of government imped uh, impediments to free trade. Political freedom and escape from tyranny demand that individuals not be unreasonably constrained by government in the crossing of political boundaries. Economic freedom demands the unrestricted movement of human as well as financial capital across national borders. Regarding rights and discrimination, quote, the government should neither deny nor abridge any individual's human right based upon sex, wealth, ethnicity, creed, age, national origin, personal habits, political preference, or sexual orientation. Members of private organizations retain their rights to set whatever standard of association they deem appropriate and individuals are free to respond with ostracism, boycotts, and other free market solutions. Uh, regarding represent, representative government, libertarians support the most representative uh, system that reflects the electorate at the federal, state, and local levels. Uh, that also means that we end taxpayer-funded primaries, which are just basically uh, the taxpayers uh, you know, picking people who are not party members who are picking uh, candidates uh, at the state's expense. That also means that we want equal access to, uh, we want equitable ballots, uh, uh, equal access to the ballot and reform ballot access laws. We also want to end gerrymandering and make it easier for referendums, recalls, and appeals. Uh, and with regard to self-determination, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of individual liberty, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to agree to such new governments as to them shall seem most likely to protect their liberty, which seems to be a paraphrase of the Declaration of Independence. And the last part of the platform is omissions, basically saying that just because we don't have uh, we don't have a stance on it doesn't mean that we condone it or apply approval. 
And that is my presentation on the uh, platform of the Libertarian Party. Thank you. <laughs> so, is there going to be uh, a moderator to the questions? Or do I just pick? And, uh, no, we usually just don't have a moderator. We just let it fall apart. All right, let me talk. Let me, I'll take from this show. Is the Libertarian Party aware that it stand on no entangling alliances led to World War One and World War Two? So, the Libertarian Party. Uh, are you asking if Libertarian Party is aware that exists back then? He asked he asked if the Libertarian Party is aware of uh, non-interventionism and isolationism led to World War One and World War Two. Is that what you're asking? Yes. We are uh, aware that if we possibly didn't get into World War One, uh, as Wilson said, that the Treaty of Versailles may have. Uh, had a different outcome, and there might have not been a World War II because of our involvement. Um, if, uh, as our involvement in alliances since World War II, let me put it this way, prevented World War III so far. Well, is, do you count the Cold War as World War III? No. No, hot war. Okay, how is it not a hot war? My dad got uh, was about to get drafted and people died. All those proxy wars. How about that? Well, is this World War? If it, so only the cold, only a cold war, or only hot war includes nuclear weapons. Does that mean that World War One is not a hot war? You know what a world war is. Don't yes, uh, but I don't okay, get why uh, right. why Vietnam is not considered a. No, that's a. Or the Korean War. No, that was a police action. <laughs> People got drafted and went there and died. Yes, yes but, we, but alliances. Alliance. Yeah, I mean, we can build peaceful alliances with people. Uh, that's fine. We're not going to, just because, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that we want to, we have to, you know, if, if one of our partners gets attacked, we why do we have to be the one to rescue them? Okay, questions. Jonathan. Yes, uh, thank you for coming today and speaking. Uh, Apparently, our Congress doesn't understand that unconstitutional surveillance of we the people of the United States is in fact unconstitutional. If the Libertarians had a significant number of people on local, state, and federal positions, how would this crime be addressed immediately? We would, uh, the Libertarian Party would uh, end CESOL, uh surveillance uh, you know, of the American people. Uh, if we, you know, go through legal channels, get warrants, if there is a significant uh, evidence that somebody might be uh, wanting to commit a crime, but we would, that would be one of our priorities uh, if libertarians were to be elected to office, would be to restore the Fourth Amendment. And oh, just a little bit about the Fourth Amendment. Do you mind reminding us what it is? Fourth Amendment is the right to be secure in your property and your papers and effects. Basically, uh, government can't snoop around your stuff without a warrant. And when it comes megadata, it's not just today or tomorrow. This could, uh, information be used 30 years from now to criminalize anybody in this room based on somebody who made a career off of just looking at your death. That's worse than CIA. That's extinction. Pat Butler. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, you're clear on domestic spying. How do you fear, uh, feel about uh, our uh, spying on our enemies, for example? And they're out there. I'm talking about North Korea. I'm talking about uh, probably China. I'm talking certainly about Russia. Uh, how do you feel about our right to uh, uh, gain intelligence information on what those people are up to? The better to avoid uh, this understanding that could lead to war. Uh, well, we um, we support like a, we are not. Uh, the military should have some sort of intelligence uh, part, a component to it. So uh, I don't think we would cease uh, spying on hostile people like North Korea or Putin or anything like that. Um, 
Um, what was the second part of your question? Uh, and and uh, you know the right to uh, uh, gather this uh, information uh, for our protection, the better to yeah, in fact uh, avoid uh, a misunderstanding that could lead to a war. Yeah, I'm trying to find it in here, but we it, there was a clause in here that says yes, we support. Uh, you know, we don't completely totally anti uh, collect. You know. Intelligent, you know, foreign intelligence. That's comforting. <laughs> Bill went. Yeah, there was a report on WCPT a few months ago about the Illinois uh, Libertarian Policy Institute, and uh, is that they're using uh, tax free funds to pay for uh, nonprofit funds to pay for profit making uh, institutions and. I was wondering if you thought that sort of thing is uh, kosher libertarianism. So the government giving taxpayer money to no, private no, companies? No, no, they, they, they are funded by, uh, I guess, mostly tax free money. But uh, apparently they're sending off some of this to contract profit making groups. Uh, well, if they if they pay t if these groups pay taxes and I don't know they get a tax break, I'm all for that. I don't know if I'd call that. Uh, uh, it's only a subsidy if if it's only your company that's getting a tax break or anything like that. Um, essentially, a subsidy. Is so it still stopping off that the public trough. Yeah. If it's only that person, yeah, I think that you should. Uh, I think that if I think libertarians would support giving everybody the same tax breaks, the same sort of uh, benefits, uh, you know. Sir. Well, I see you, uh, the uh, libertarians believe in unrestricted, unrestricted movement of humans across national borders. Uh, that seems kind of dumb. I mean, I like a lot yeah. of your uh, pro uh, platform, but you're going to have illegal people just walk right in and... Yes. Well, that's not right. <laughs> okay. That's our, that's our position. That's what we believe. Well, uh, don't get my vote. Okay. Mr. Peter. Yeah, regarding Section 1.9 of the Second Amendment, I looked at, for some reason, the website of your candidate for governor, Cash Jackson, is it? Yeah. And they got a picture of him. I printed it out. He's having some fun. He says he's working his 8K at a gun range. That doesn't bother me too much, but right below is a picture of a 10 or 12-year-old child with what looks like that same weapon, and he took a selfie. And there's another one. Do you think 10 or 12 year old children should be trained in how to use deadly assault weapons? Yeah. Is that yeah. in keeping with the liberty of Of course, uh, kid, I, my that parents, children, my dad, uh, take guns to school so they can Can you let the schoolers. speaker answer the question? Wait, I, I got, uh, you know, they used to, you know, have gun racks on the back of pickup trucks and kids would take them to school. Um, if, if parents uh, feel their child is responsible enough to handle an assault rifle and want to take them to the range and shoot it, I have no problem with parents doing that. As long as the kids don't turn the weapon on everybody else. What about my children? Which doesn't happen very often. Their safety doesn't count. What about your children? Do you think that endangers the safety of my children? If they're pointing it at your children and want to shoot them, it does. But if they're down at the range and they're just popping it off, well, or if they're just you know hunting or whatever, that's the best you can come up with. <laughs> well, most of the, the how often do sh mass shootings happen? It's not very. Oh well. What? Ma'am. My question is about uh, the uh, allowing people to do whatever they want to do uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with anybody else. And uh, that's a very, very uh, uh, difficult, Order. difficult uh, uh, idea because the first thing people do when they're doing what they want to do is take advantage of others. Where in the world would you draw the line such that uh, Charles uh, Cole would have developed? For mass well, so Charles Cook developed what? He developed into what he is, and he's taking advantage of other people and causing great suffering. Well, that's what happens when you start taking advantage of other people and causing great suffering. How? By collecting and having billions of dollars when other people are poor. Why is it wrong for somebody to have billions of dollars? Because they're withdrawing money from the 
uh, from the community that needs to be used for other purposes. Did they not get that money? Uh, did they did they fraud people when they made that money? Yeah. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Okay, then maybe then maybe then maybe there's something to it. But where are you going to draw the line? And let, uh, fraud, theft, violent, violence. That's could you repeat the initial question? Uh, I think she asked uh, if people can do what they want, where do you draw the line? Yeah, so fraud, force, violence. Uh, exploitation of others? Well, we'll define exploitation. You can okay, make them work for less money than they should. Hiring somebody to do work. And yes. they they are worth a certain amount of wealth, or worth that they do is a certain amount of wealth, but you take most of that and give them a small salary. That's exploitation. Maybe. Maybe. It depends. Uh, what's the market rate for the job that you're paying them to do? What do you mean market rate? Uh, what are most, like, well, what you... okay, Charles Polk establishes his own market rate. Okay, other people have questions. People don't establish the market rate. That doesn't... Yes, they do. Uh, yes, 3D printed weapons. Yes. Cool. Would you say your position again out loud? We support the right of people to use 3D printers to uh, manufacture their own guns. To do what with? To hunt or to protect themselves or just to have them because they're Travel cool. freely around the country. Yeah, sure. In, the, in and out of airports and restaurants. Uh, I, don't, I, I mean, ideally you should be allowed to do that. They, if they. And the way it is now, I don't think it's a smart idea to take guns to airports. Oh, uh, wait, what, what do you mean? Well, the, I think the TSA wouldn't like it if you tried to bring a gun out there. But the TSA is a... Oh, TSA can I... Order! I'm asking that we keep our, our voices down so we can hear the questions. I don't know what it is. Should the TSA object to 3D printed weapon? No, because uh, the TS, because, uh, you know, terrorists uh, would probably be less likely to hijack a, uh, a plane if they're, like, people were, you know, had guns on there. Ernie Norman. Yeah. Um, I think Republicans would love a lot, not necessarily everything, but a lot of the things in your principles here. Could you tell us that what are the differences between libertarians and Republicans? I don't see the similarities really except maybe a handful of issues where we agree on maybe taxes. But the Republicans have not, uh, especially in the era of Trump, do not support free trade. They don't support equality rights. They're very socially uh, regressive. Um, libertarians are pro-peace, anti-war. Republicans are not. Republic uh, libertarians actually want to go further than Republicans in, on economic matters as far as taxes go. Republicans pay a lot of lip service but don't do anything. Libertarians actually support a smaller government. Gene Horcher. Yeah, uh, you talked about violence and uh, fraud. We have, uh, I've been told we got two million people in prisons in the United States. That's federal and state. What, uh, could you go over your position on people in prison? And the uh, number, the, the, the big driver of people going into prison is Thank drug you. prohibition. So, you know, we're throwing kids in for possession and their lives are ruined and libertarian candidates, um, all the ones I can think of would support if they could, um, uh, hardening all nonviolent offenders from prison and get them out of there and empty, them, empty out the prisons. Thank you. Ellen Harrow. Any gun One stuff is, um, how Libertarian Party would support withdrawal from the UN, NATO, things like that. As far as protecting the environment, uh, libertarians see pollution as a trespass against property, as an act of aggression. So libertarians would would be okay with uh, 
making sure you know companies don't pollute or people don't throw crud into Lake Michigan or throw crud in the air. So regulations and stuff like that. Well, libertarians are against uh, taking people's uh, you know against murder. I guess prohibitions on murder is a regulation, right? So I guess we support regulations as far as it goes to uh, protecting your life and your property and your you know things like that. Uh, can you expand a little bit? Why should the United States withdraw from NATO? The United States should withdraw from NATO because it's a big slush. You know, it's it's we have no business uh, being entangled in the affairs of other countries. Um, we because we of our robust imperialist presence, countries in Europe can't afford to splurge on benefits for their people uh, while we pick up the slack uh, as far as their militaries go. So I think that uh, by getting out of NATO, uh, Europe would have to pick up the slack on, on their own on their own self-defense. Thank you. Can I quickly uh, piggyback on that? Uh, Senator Rand Paul said that you, if he could do whatever he wanted, he would cut all of the uh, money capitalism before cutting one dime from the social safety net. Do you agree that we should vote at the same time? Jonathan, we should cut the social safety net first. Can you repeat the question, please? He's asking, uh, Rand Paul said he would aim corporate welfare before he cuts the social safety net. Do I agree? Um, the Libertarian Party, I think, officially would be cut both. Uh, and as fast as you can. Uh, I think it's a, for Rand Paul, I, it might be a good pragmatic stance to have that way because corporate welfare, I think, uh, you know, I think you get a lot, that's a bigger, more corporations get welfare than I think people do, so. Michael Lehman. You know, we have this chart here that we go by the industrial complex military. The War Department, 1.4 trillion dollars goes to the War Department every year. Everybody should pick up one of these and read it. It's done very well. So, what percent? What? How many billions goes to NATO from America? And why should we be spending more on NATO? And why should Europe be spending more on NATO? Picking up the slack, as you say. I think we spend enough on uh, wars in the world. Yeah. That's what. That's, that's. I don't disagree with anything you said. One point four trillion. Wait, is there a question? 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 One point four trillion. Yeah, I, I don't know so if you heard that we we're anti-war. Tell us to spend more money on wars. I did it. I, and what did I say? I, we Picking should. Picking up the slack. Yeah. We're not no, I said the other. Right, Michael, 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 I said the other. Michael, 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 Oh, we got Trump's not a libertarian. I don't know what I never mentioned anything about Trump. And I forgot what your question was. I don't I don't I think I made a lot of anti-war statements throughout my presentation. I don't get why you're When did I push war? Alright, has anyone not had a question? Yes, sir, David. All right. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the party's position is a lot more or a lot less controls over corporations, financial institutions, and consumer protections. Well, if by controls you mean like we're we, we don't want them to to defraud people or to you know or, or to steal money or anything like that. So I, I don't know if if you count that as controls. No, I'm talking about like like legislation and uh, and then oversight, basically rules that govern companies and corporations. Are, are you for letting them kind of laissez-faire do what they want? Or well, uh, let me give you a good example. Uh, what they want? So the, the, uh, the, the oil platform in the Gulf of Mexico, the Deepwater Horizon, the, uh, their regulators were just basically people from the oil industry. So if we have government regulators, uh, at least in this instance, the government regulators were just basically cronies and they didn't really do any regulation. So what good is it if, if the regulators are uh, 
you know, picked by the people that, that are in their same issue solution to get good regulation or to get rid of a lot of regulation. You, I keep it depends on what the regulation, what do you mean by regulation? Like, should we keep regulations and make sure big companies don't fraud people? I think that's okay. But, you're but I mean, I don't, it depends on what the regulation is. Okay, but I, I, my concern is I hear you talking about shrinking government, about laissez-faire, and I guess I'm looking for more specifics. So. Uh, should there be any regulations on uh, interest rates for loans? Um, I don't think so. Uh, Ma'am, you didn't have a withdrawal. Oh, okay. Uh, David, Travis, you didn't have a question. <clears throat> no, I haven't had a question yet. So my question is, uh, under the Clinton administration, I believe it was, they modified the right of public domain, whereby if uh, someone can show the government that they can bring in more taxes on a certain property than is currently being paid, that uh, they, the government should be, the government can take that property by right of public domain and then sell it to that, that particular entity that claims they can bring in you mean eminent taxes. domain under the right of eminent domain uh, don't you think that eminent domain should be kept in place as our founding fathers laid up to begin with well it depends on what eminent domain is used for uh, just because our, our founding fathers were for it doesn't mean that it's okay to have or that it's necessarily libertarian oh, 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 oh. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing really libertarian about taking uh, land by force. And uh, well, I guess in eminent domain, you're supposed to give just compensation. Just and fair compensation. Yeah, I mean, if the government, I mean, as long as both parties are only mutually uh, when, agreeing to only it. Only under circumstances and it's like for a road, a hospital, or a very I important the question. Thing. I would prefer that the government uh, pay for it uh, with the consent of the property owner. Uh, Tim Bolger. All right. I'd like to know, um, we are now entangled in Afghanistan and Iraq still, after 15 years of spending. Does the Libertarian Party have some kind of plan to get us out of those conflicts? And the one that I'm referring to was the one we supported under um, in Peru with the Shining Path. What? Are you talking about? Uh, is there is there a way that the Libertarian Party? How do we get out of Afghanistan and Iraq? Right. Yeah, the, the plan for the Libertarian Party is to uh, end all or to uh, to uh, close all foreign bases and bring the troops home as immediately as possible. Uh, has anyone not had a question? Ma'am in the back. the Democratic or Republican platform, but some of the uh, other issues uh, are like cryptocurrencies um, and this kind of uh, 3D printing, not just of guns, but of anything. This is like the Star Trek replicator sort of stuff. Um, Yes, it's very edgy. We, we welcome a lot of, we have a lot of forward thinking and futuristic minded and entrepreneurial kind of minded Free people. Free market drugs? I'm sorry? Free market drugs? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. We support them. Yes. I mean, has banning them stopped people from using them? No. No. Sir. Are libertarians for abortion? Uh, it depends on the libertarian. You can, uh, some are, some would say that uh, 
women have rights to control their body and they can they have therefore a right to an abortion if they choose to have one. Or you got people that say that uh, abortion violates the non-aggression principle and therefore uh, we should be against it. So it depends on who you talk to. The platform says get, is basically get the government out of it. Uh, but but you, you, I think you just acknowledged it, that abortion, where, where do human rights begin? Birth or conception or somewhere in between. So does the individual have any rights not in that period before birth? That well, uh, I, guess, in, I guess our platform lets the individual make the choices of where they think life begins, if abortion is the right thing for them or not. Etc. So I mean, we, we don't have a we don't have a uh, position on where life begins or anything like that. Uh, sir, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, uh, do you think that we should still have the electoral college? The electoral college. I think uh, I think that there definitely should be um, mechanisms in the system to 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 kind of be a re buffer against, you know, as it is now, uh, you know, big cities can basically dominate uh, in Congress. And, you know, that's, that's where most of the people are. I think that protections uh, to kind of even it out and rebuff against a super majority are okay. So I guess as it stands now, yes, I would, me personally would keep the Electoral College. Charles Paydock. Yeah, just in uh, <coughs> Article 2.6, you don't like federal employees. Well, I, I had to have a master's degree and when I, and let me finish if you don't sure mind. Lie. And get security clearances and then was a probationary employee for th three years and and five years actually, and then you're 35 years of credible service, and you're saying after the end of all that, the government would just say thank you. We'll see you around sometime, Charlie. Well, just what because... about my colleagues who got shot and killed in the line of duty? We just lost some forest fires, firefighters out in the Forest Service last week. I was at a memorial. So we just tell the federal employees, well, thanks a lot. You served your country, but now that we're done with you, we wish you the best of luck. What do you get a little certificate? Why is that so cheap? Well, does does don't you uh, believe that people deserve a pension for their contribution to this? Yeah, and the and and uh, you don't and I would be. Yeah. You get the you do it? Well, you Excuse like me, I can answer the question. The question. Yeah. So yeah. if the government may, if so, if you we'll work for a uh, if if you are a state employee and the government says, yeah, I'll pay you. Uh, this, when you retire, we should honor that. So just because we're against government employees doesn't mean we don't want to negate, uh, you know, to go back on promises or contracts that uh, were originally agreed upon. That's why we support, at least our candidates support uh, putting new, new, uh, that's why our candidates support putting 401k plans for new state employees. That's not a repension. Well, uh, don't give me time. I'm Wait, how can we pay for these That's pensions now? There's got to be reform. Don't pretend it is. Justify your stance. Don't pretend it is. Hey, hey you. Uh, justify your stance. The government employee should be moved on to 401k or uh, instead yeah, of defined, no, so uh, in the, defined um, contribution instead of defined benefits. In the private sector, you get a 401k. Your, you know, your company usually has to be turning a profit in order to Wall Street yeah. to, to uh, provide you those sort of things. Government doesn't work on a on an incentive like that. They just want to take the money from the taxpayer and give very very uh, comfortable pensions to people. Sometimes if you're a state employee and you have yeah, two jobs, you double dip and you get two pensions. So, and, it, and it's Are really causing a big issue in our boys? state, and we what might go mean? bankrupt because of it. So if we can get, if we can uh, start, if we, excuse me, sir, one full at a time, if we can get plans in that uh, don't put the uh, burden on the taxpayers to for for employee pensions, I think that's a good first step in the right direction. 
Yeah, let him die. Jonathan Martin. Let him die. Jonathan Martin. Die in the gutter like a dog. The United States spends $610 billion of our money, we the people's money every year on military, while seven other nations, China, Russia, India, Saudi Arabia, France, Great Britain, Japan, spend $580 billion. So we spend more than the next seven countries combined. I think King, King What's said your it question, best, Jonathan? where we're approaching spiritual death if we don't let What's new ideas question? come into the country's dialogue. It sounds like you're presenting some of those really good new ideas. Thank you. I'm right, no. That was not a question. Over here. Yes, I agree with you. Do, do your platforms show a reduction in military spending? Yes. Our, uh, our platform has always consistently been uh, in the foreign wars, bring the boys home, uh, let's not be the right policemen there. of the world. Hell yeah. Gentlemen. Two-part question, just to follow up to the NATO thing, and you just want the U.S. to stop Louder, funding. please. You want the U.S. to stop funding U European countries' military so that they can do, I mean, let them determine their own military policies and their own spending, right? It's yes. Not, it's not to say that you want to increase it. You don't want yes, to increase Yes, I want them, I want... Uh, yes, exactly right. I want, uh, yes, so yes, I only want, yes, countries that we provide support for should start providing for themselves. Okay. And, and also, right now we're seeing Trump do something that happened under the Bush administration, which is the federal government, the EPA, is stopping California from increasing its standards on vehicle emissions. Um, so does California have a state's right to, uh, to you know, have that uh, emissions policy because it's not mentioned in the enumerated powers? And wouldn't it be better to just abolish the EPA instead of just wait for some Republican to ruin it every eight years? Does California, does the state of California have states' rights uh, to determine their own auto emission policy, or does the federal EPA have a right to override it? Again, the Constitution and libertarianism are not uh, synonymous, uh, although there's a lot of things in the Constitution libertarian, libertarians like. One of the, thing being, one of the things being is a uh, sense of federalism. So, yes, theoretically, I think that if California wants stricter standards, uh, I think that's uh, okay. I don't have to live in California. But uh, what do you know? What the what's the justification for the Trump administration doing that? Do you know? I don't know. They, they don't like hippies and they don't like saving the environment. Ah, uh, well. I think if California wants to be more rigorous in their regulations, then the feds, I guess, go ahead. Should we abolish the EPA? Yes. Let's okay, do something Dave, different. Dave Travis. Uh, isn't it a fact that if we stop paying money to organizations like NATO and SATO and picking up the tab for uh, Japan's military and Germany's military, that we could greatly reduce our income tax? I think so. Why not? I mean, our, our military uh, budget is what, like a quarter of our federal spending? I, I actually don't know this offhand how much, what percentage of it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we can drastically cut our military budget, then I guess that would make, you know, we could use that to pay down the national debt or give it back to, give that money back to the citizens in a tax cut or something. Final question. The, the uh, city and state workers are getting 3% compound interest every year. I, I worked for the post office 51 years. I only get 1%. Maybe if I get that, and I got to pay for these fat cats, these teachers and sanitation people. Uh, can, uh, is there anything about uh, p pension reform that can be done? I know it went to the Supreme Court of the state. Are you saying you want the same plan that no, state employees No, I'm saying have? they should cut that 3% compound interest. It's breaking the state, state and the city. Yeah, they should reform it. They should, if, they, if, that, if that could help fix the problem, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if that, that is tied to the, the contracts for state, for the, or not there, for the state or municipal employees. If that's, if that's in their contract though, I then either we can renegotiate those contracts or uh, going forward make it a lower rate or something like that. In relation to that, 
question. What did Einstein say was the most powerful force in the universe? I, uh, I compound know. interest. Hello, we can go on forever. Yo, this is third hello, we're going to go to rebuttals now because we got a huge crowd here. Uh, thank our speaker. Thank you, guys. Rebuttal period now with the oh, conference. So, everybody who wants to give a rebuttal, get your hand up and let's get a head count. Hold up the hands and keep them up there because we're not going to have people walking up here later that didn't raise their hand. We're going to time it. One, two, three, four, 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 four side, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, okay. Uh, well, everybody's got four minutes. We'll go with that. So, all right. You're up first. All right, James. Uh, I just have two things to say off subject. One is the first person who stood up, stood up here said that Trump is incompetent. I think he's extremely competent. He is taking all the oxygen out of the news, completely distracting his activities for. Um, dismantling the regulations that we that we have worked for for 30 40 years yeah. and he's very competent this serves him very very well uh, the second thing is the speaker does did not um, say that uh, the Koch brothers were doing anything illegal or whatever but in East Chicago there are those huge piles of pet coke were impinging on people's picnics because they would put out a cake and in a few minutes it would be covered with black pet coke. Uh, you know, pet coke is petroleum coke. Same thing uh, that they, same process for coal coke, but it's with oil. And it's very powdery and it gets over everything and it's a big mess. And the Coke brothers, of course, were benefiting from this. In fact, their name was on the gate to the pet coke piles. So uh, those are things that I didn't really intend to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was uh, last week's presentation, there was a short video of Michael Schellenberger interviewing James E. Hansen. And uh, this was under the auspices of a group called uh, Environmental Progress or the Breakthrough Institute. And um, uh, the um, literature from this group is very, very much in favor of what is called the Chernobyl Forum. The Chernobyl Forum uh, put out um, an analysis of the effects of the Chernobyl accident, and uh, every person on that forum was either a representative of industry or a representative of governments that uh, are in favor of nuclear power, uh, and also that did not want people to panic uh, in spite of the fact that they had every right to panic, as one person from uh, Utah once said, they call it uh, mass hysteria, but why not call it mass hysteria when it's been mass murder? So uh, the Chernobyl Forum, their report is highly, highly suspect. And I have here a, a, another report by a group uh, that goes through point by point where the Chernobyl Forum is um, faulted. And I would go through as much of this as I can, although I probably don't have time to do very much of it. But um, given that I can find my glasses, are they on my head? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, the first thing that, that um, the, the, the Chern Chernobyl Forum uh, ignored was internal radiation doses. They didn't take into account what happens internally when a person internalizes radioisotopes that uh, go into their uh, organs and irradiate them from inside. And another thing that uh, is in this report that I'm looking at says 43% uh, of the core, the core meaning the nuclear core, 43% uh, of the core is cesium-137, which is an extremely 
dangerous isotope uh, was released and the Chernobyl forum said it was only 30%. Another one is 65% of the cores of iodine-131, which, which causes uh, thyroid cancer, was released, where that is 16% higher than the Chernobyl forum uh, said it was. And also this... Re Okay. Uh, there's many of these, and I'll give you one more. The uh, four dollars. The results of this report indicate that three million nine hundred thousand square kilometers of Europe was contaminated by cesium-137, and um, this is forty percent higher than the Chernobyl forum reported. And not only that, the Chernobyl Forum basically ignored the fallout in Europe uh, in favor of what happened in, in U the Ukraine and Belarus. So uh, there's just no way that I can get through all this. That goes to the table in front of you. <laughs> all right. You know, uh, so many libertarians have good ideas. You know, the prostitution thing. <laughs> Some drugs, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, you guys sound like Wall Streeters. You, you want to uh, get rid of all these public uh, subsidies and you want to, uh, you know what, you want Wall Street to have more money? We just printed $18 trillion more on the last That's year. That's all fraud and it should be abolished. They don't yeah, want to take their losses. Concentration of power and wealth in Wall Street. Open up the competition and you'll see what happens. Good job, creators. Remove, remove the barriers to entry. Deregulate. I don't know what I do without you, Tim, helping me. Deregulate. <laughs> anyway. Time. Thank you. He's a Sox fan. What do you expect? All right. Um, hello. Personal attack. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> especially in the last 10 years. Hey, um. So anyway, you know, you guys have some good ideas, you know, some 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 things I don't like. So you, it'll take you probably another hundred years to tweak it. Anyway, um, my, you know, I think I got I, Trump figured out. He knows he's in way over his head, and he's not qualified. He just takes the suggestions from the Republican Party, That's you know, right. all the right-wing nut jobs. That's right. And he just does what they want him to do, because right. he can't figure it out on his own. Then he gets off on these stupid distractions like Korea and Iran and all this stuff. So my prediction is if there is a blue wave, this Trump oh, yeah, isn't that too. stupid. He's stupid clever. He'll turn into a Democrat in November, <laughs> it'll just do whatever the damn Democrats want to do. So I think I figured Trump, Trump out because he, he'll just go along with whoever the legislators are in power. So we got that to look forward to going for us. And you know what? Actually, I had another question on this sheet. I, I recommend everybody to get one of these, read it, check the website, get on the Facebook. It's pretty well done, but it tells you where all your tax money goes. Three trillion dollars a year, every year. <laughs> okay, so 1.4 trillion goes to the War Department, right? For veterans, for research, for bombs, for bullets, for personnel, for 1.4 trillion. The question I had from, hey, libertarians, pay attention back there. What, of this 1.4 trillion every year, what is going to NATO? Between 66 and 85 million. I looked it up on my phone. How much? Between 66 and 85 million, depending on the year. It fluctuates. 60 billion. 60, 68. million at least going to Billion would have been a boy, billion. right? Billion. Okay, so. Billion or billion? Billion. Billion, billion with a B. Of course, we're talking yeah. billions yeah. and trillions yeah. when it comes to war. Billion, billion, billion. Billion? No, billion. Time out. Say it one more time. Boy or Mike? $65 million. Mike. Million. 
It was our, our contributions to NATO each year are estimated between sixty something and eighty something million. That's million. it. No, that's nothing. That's just NATO contributions. <laughs> <laughs> that's other that's stuff that's that's a and there's other trillions going to other. Trips. How many troops of the NATO countries are fighting on the Middle East? Keep it down, people. Let the speaker have his say. You like that up? All right. But it's a moment. I was trying to get the dessert. Yeah, All right, I'm gonna have some soup. You guys uh, handle over. Thank you. Oh, All right. Well, I think that the budget should be balanced on the backs of the taxpayers. I figure if the average person is working ten hours a day to pay to, to is working ten hours a day to make ends meet, they can work another couple of hours to pay down the national debt. That's all. <laughs> well, uh, College of Complexes, we've made it through another week of Trump and who's Vice President again, College of Complexes? Yes. Mike Pence. Is that who you want to be President? You've got to ask. I don't. I'd rather have an anti-established extinctionist. Of all the people who aren't as anti- or who are anti- establishment in the United States, the worst one is president right now. So he's the last choice I would want to be president of anti-establishment. But would you rather really have Mike Pence as president? Come on, Chicago, we're better than that. Come on, Illinois, we're better than that. Have you been to Indiana? Where do all the guns come into Chicago from that you don't like? You Democrats that watch MSNBC all the time. I don't like guns either, but I don't watch MSNBC anymore ever since I got rid of uh, Phil Donahue and uh, the late Ed Schultz, but where do all those guns come from? They come from Indiana. That's where Mike Pence is from. So, yes, we should impeach Trump. We should impeach the source of the problem. He's a symptom. The source of the problem is militarism, imperialism, and ecocide. Our speaker tonight is trying to voice solutions to those problems in a libertarian policy platform. How much was it? I can't it's wait 75. until we live in a country where it's Greens Thank and Libertarians and other independents having the dialogue instead of these know-nothing liberals and these know-nothing conservatives. Yeah. Whoa. So, I brought an article this evening from In These Times from July of 2018 how Greens and Libertarians are working together in California in a town called Malakoff Diggins. That's the future that the younger generations and the older generations that remember Henry Wallace and remember Eugene V. Debs and remember I.F. Stone and remember Malcolm X and remember Studs Terkel and Martin Luther King Jr., rest their souls, are headed towards in their analysis of who to vote for on election day because that represents real human values for a civilization that will avoid extinction in the 21st century. I would like to disagree respectfully after having said that because, you know, our speaker can take it. He's got tough skin and he proved that tonight. This has not been a very friendly crowd at times, it's been kind of hostile. Um, Government should not compete with private enterprise. I just want to say this to someone who I, lo I love every time the libertarians come and join the dialogue. Uh, I just want to say this respectfully. This is not antagonistic. I think go government is trying as best as can with failure leadership to regulate private enterprise. I don't think they're trying to compete with it as much as regulate it, exercise enforcement of the laws to prevent waste, fraud, abuse, and theft. And... Uh, you know, when you have a bank robber that's really slick, like Lloyd Blankfein or, uh, 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 who's the other guy? Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon. You know, market extremism is just as deadly as physical extremism. And I think we should just enforce the laws that are on the books to put those guys in jail. And that's all I have to say. All right. What a boy, Jonathan. 
Dig out my book. Excuse me. Oops. Interesting, uh, interesting talk here, I must say that. When I would ask our speaker, whose party does not believe in uh, locking up nonviolent criminals, if he woke up some morning and found that his bank account had been cleaned out by some nonviolent criminal, yeah. Would he suggest that the man be sent for 20 hours of counseling? <laughs> or would he maybe suggest that he get uh, a more rigorous education in civic responsibility? Our speaker advocates uh, our getting out of NATO, and there's been a lot of talk about that lately. But remember, we helped form NATO in 1945 so that if any fighting were to take place in the post-war era after World War II, that the fighting be done somewhere else and not in our front yard. That was designed in large part to make sure that when the Russians swept across uh, Western Europe, as they would have done had they given the opportunity, that we don't find, that we don't find these people uh, in our front yards. That so far the worst thing the Russians have done, as if it's not bad enough, has been to uh, play games uh, with our uh, elections. That's serious enough, but at least we haven't had gunshots in our front yard, at least not coming from an enemy army. These are the kinds of things that a responsible government involves itself in to protect its citizens in the long run. I'm not an advocate of imperialism. No sensible person really is, unless of course they, uh, they have uh, a business or two that uh, gives them uh, uh, a hearty living uh, by being able to supply arms and weapons, uh, other weapons. You know, this is, this is such a simplistic approach you know, let's save money by getting rid of our allies. Let's save money by closing our prisons, except for the most heinous criminals. Indeed, what would our speaker recommend if it turned out that our beloved president were found guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors worthy of a prison sentence? Now remember, we have never had a president in this country go to jail. We have never had to change the presidential uh, anthem from hail to the chief to jail to the chief. <laughs> and we must remember that it is possible that that could someday happen. Are we going to take a president who committed serious crimes, indeed high crimes and misdemeanors, and this is not an impeachment speech, and sent him on his way after 20 hours of counseling or maybe a visit to the clergyman of his choice. You know, would uh, give him a spanking or something, I don't know. Uh, look, we live in a real world. It is not a simple world. It is a world where you sometimes have to make compromises and you sometimes have to hold your nose in order to get better things done. And you have to live with things, and you have to live with people you can't stand in order to get better things done. This is the real world, folks. You know, if, uh, if you want to hear uh, a talk on idealism, uh, if you want to live in a world where all things are perfect, I would suggest that this week or next week you go see uh, Mr. Rogers at your local theater. Or we can move to Iceland. He will have, he will have some good things to say to you and uh, you will come away feeling edified. That's not the real world. We need, for example, people say, let's, let's, let's uh, not give so much money to the police department. Let's not give so much money to uh, the people who do our intelligence work. Let's abandon uh, indeed, our whole intelligence program, some would say, no. 
But the fact of the matter is, without information like that, we wouldn't know what the bad guys are up to and what we need to do to stop them. And there are bad guys out there. And it has nothing to do with their uh, political views echoed in places like this. It has to do with people who would happily throw a bomb in this place. It has to do with people who would happily throw a grenade in a school simply because they didn't like uh, what the uh, teachers were teaching there. There are such people out there, we've seen them. Someone said, I believe it was the speaker, who said, how many times do we have a mass shooting? Take a look at your back issues of your newspapers. Okay. You'll find it now averages about once a month. Yeah. No, and that. there are drone strikes Frankly, every day. Lord. If I were a teacher, I would ask, uh, frankly, to be deployed to the Middle East where I'd feel a little bit safer <laughs> than going into a classroom in some cities, uh, including Chicago. Let's get real. You know, we're not we're not going to have apple pie and ice cream every day of our lives. Right. Sometimes life gets so dirty. So therefore, we shouldn't have democracy or justice either. Well, we have justice, but the reason we have justice and the reason we have the right to sit in a place like this and voice our opinion, regardless of how uh, uh, unusual that opinion may be, is because of the fact that guys who went before us stood at places like Lexington and Concord, stood at, in, in, in places uh, like New Orleans during the War of 1812, right. stood in places at Gettysburg, yes. and in World War I and World War II, where some of us, our fathers and uncles, uh, fought and in some cases died there. Yeah. It's because of the fact that these people paid a price most of us have not had to pay, thank God. Right. So, yes. this comes as a price. We're lucky we don't have to pay it, but that's what bought the justice that we have today. It did not, it did not get bought because of the fact that we sat around and said, gee, wouldn't this be a good idea? Yeah, I think King, King George would let us, let us get away with that. I think some of my relatives in Ireland would have been wonderfully delighted if they didn't have to face the possibility that they might someday have to face a firing squad or a hangman's noose because they had the unique idea that their country ought to be a free country just like in America. These are the kinds of things we don't like to talk about, we don't like to think about, but what we're doing here today was bought at a heavy price paid by many of our relatives, our ancestors. And you're going to be paying a heavy price once you're, if you get stuff going over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Very Shut up, Jonathan. Jonathan, you're getting that just like Charlie. It's picking up everything, so please. All right. Certain comments were made in the podium a few minutes ago in which the liberals and the Democrats were condemned as somehow being responsible for this country's problems. We are not. We are, we are doing our best to try and solve these problems. And with regard to impeachment, yes, I want Trump impeached. I didn't before. Mike Pence. John, this isn't your turn to talk. Sit down there and be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't like Mike Pence, and that was one of the reasons why, I, until recently, I opposed Donald Trump's impeachment. That was before Helsinki. At Helsinki, Donald Trump committed an act of treason. Now, whatever I may think of Mike Pence, Yes, don't look so puzzled. He was, busy, he, was, he was busy negotiating on behalf of Russia, not the United States. And he practically spent the entire time kissing Putin's ass. The bottom line here is that he committed an act of treason. If that doesn't constitute a threat to the safety of the American people, then I don't know what does. And the only reason why I don't favor his impeachment right this second is that a Republican Congress, which we now have, they're not going to do it. 
they've already made that plan. They're busy trying to beat Ron Rosenstein until Paul Ryan showed some sense and put his foot down and said no. The bottom line is that we need to elect as many Democrats to Congress as possible this fall. In the Democratic Congress, all things are possible, and the first thing that should happen in January, assuming that we do get a Democratic Congress, first order of business after they convene is Trump's impeachment is removed from office. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest of my parents, well, that's just too goddamn bad, and we're going to have to figure out a way to live with that and figure out a way to defeat him in 2020, period. End of story. And I'll give Pence this much. He wasn't at Helsinki, and he didn't commit an act of treason against the U.S. government. Yeah. That was Gary Johnson. He's not a good why do you hate people? <laughs> there are third parties. I feel a sense of way. I feel the same way that the elder mayor Daly did about third parties. They exist for one purpose: to cause problems. Seen and not heard. And I, I favor leaving them off the ballot by the same means that Mayor Daly used. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dave, Dave stands for divisive, antagonistic, uh, addictive, and that's what I mean. something that's... Oh, sir, you, oh, you go. You go. You'd be a bunch of lost hands out there. Andrich Hello, my name is Adam Ballin, local libertarian volunteer. I'm also the precinct committeeman up in Edgewater, if anyone lives up that way. Uh, thank you, Justin, again for your presentation. Uh, just a couple of things that I noticed throughout the talk and the uh, lively back and forth with the audience. Uh, maybe a quick reminder about some of the anti-war movement roots of the party. Uh, even before we formed in the early 70s, uh, when there were certain overlaps we've been discussing on and off throughout the night with uh, the conservative movement and the organization Young Americans for Freedom, there was a split in, I believe, 1969 between the pro-Vietnam War and anti-Vietnam War delegates. And Surprise, surprise, the anti-Vietnam War delegates helped lead the way towards forming the Libertarian Party a couple years later. Uh, we had a lot of fun arguing about NATO, but maybe one thing also to remember about NATO, this isn't the liberal democratic consensus, Europe or North America anymore. We now have a vaguely neo-fascist president of the United States. We had a neo-fascist party that came in second in France. We have a neo-fascist party that came in fourth in Germany. We've got, I think, the largest of the four conservative parties in Denmark, even in sainted Scandinavia, is a right-wing populist anti-immigrant party that has reduced the Christian Democrats and the liberals uh, and the religious parties to being its junior partners in the Danish government, the Rasmussen government, I think. Uh, so this is not a reliable Europe anymore between the anti-global left-wing and anti-global right-wing parties uh, that are all of them funded by or flirtatious with Uncle Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Um, we also said something about government not competing in industry. I'm not trying to step on Justin's toes with my enthusiasm here, but we're not just talking about regulating industry. Imagine a crummy car like the Renault made by French governmental industry, or just sort of like, oh, it's a mediocre product made by a state-supported industry. That's not something you'd really look for. And, you know, since a lot of people are in prisons for very long periods of time, uh, with very heavy probation on them after they get out of prison, it begs the question, why did we need to have them in for five years if they were going to be under probation for 20, or something like that? And, and that's not even before we get to questions of whether or not the war on drugs is a failure. My opinion, it's an absolute failure. We could, you know, cut a lot of the prison population that way. Anyway, I know it's been an exciting night. Uh, oh, and on immigration, we didn't restrict immigration in this country till the 1920s, uh, except for non-white people. So, I mean, many of us who have, like I have, European ancestry came here without much in the way of legal regulation to this country once upon a time. Uh, it would be hypocritical of me to think otherwise now. Anyway, thanks a lot. Hope to come back here again. I just have, just have a couple of short uh, comments on a couple of the principles of the Libertarian Party. The, the lack of regulation. 
Well, the reason that we have regulation, uh, everything from speed limits to banking regulations, manufacturing, OSHA, and all of these things, is not because of the majority of participants who, in fact, would uh, drive sensibly and manufacture sensibly and, and, and protect the environment and so on and so forth, but from the relatively small number who will not, the people who will take advantage and, and uh, will pollute the environment and so on and so forth, saving money, increasing their profits, and thereby making it almost necessary for their competitors to do the same thing. So I think regulation is with us, and, and thank goodness uh, for it. Now, sometimes the regulations get a little uh, too detailed, a little too far, and so on, but generally speaking, uh, we need regulation. Uh, income distribution was another topic. They said, let the free market uh, you know, go where it may. Well, in fact, the free market is the uh, greatest economic system we've seen yet in terms of creating wealth, creating goods and services for people. This is true, but it is not good at distributing the income in any kind of a reasonable way. And when you have extreme differences, such as we have, we are starting to have in this country, eventually uh, you will have instability. Uh, and uh, so it's not just an issue of fairness. It's an issue of, of stability and, in the long run, an income, uh, a, a economic system where income is more uh, evenly distributed, uh, the economy will turn faster, uh, which is also good for generating wealth, generating jobs, and so on. And uh, one, one short comment, they said uh, sex workers, uh, sex work should be decriminalized. I agree. However, I think the prices need to be regulated very carefully. The older you are, the less you pay. Thank you. All right. You know, I think a lot of you guys are forgetting one fundamental lesson that all of us have realized over the last 300 years. And that is what the power of capitalism capitalism can do to reduce poverty, reduce stress, get society on its on a good hard hardy track, and increase wealth. And put your children to work. Charlie, you know, you always have to come up with something like that, but we don't put children to work in this country anymore. I gave a talk here on it. Yes, I know you did. But we're not putting our children to work in this country anymore. We have labor laws that stop it. These guys don't like laws like that. <laughs> you have to have, there's an essential source for governing power that the libertarians have, and that's the protection of life, human, of, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, as well as property rights. And it's mainly because of the lack of recognition of third world governments of those property rights of the poor that we have most of our revolutions over. When a government goes out and starts its confiscation procedures, especially against the poor, that's when you have revolutions. Libya and the Arab Spring was basically a, re a revolution against corrupt dictatorships that were, you know, frankly, com um, confiscating property. If you look at all those so-called so burnable suicides and interviewed some of the survivors later on, they said, we were not. We just want a right to do business, to transact transactions, and to get ownership of our capital so that we can, too, can join the system. If all you see, in the West, we forget something. What a magical thing it is to have a credit card or a debit card. They know what's me. They know my financial history. They base their interest rates off of it. And it's all done because they know me as an identity or me as a person. And that is not available to a lot of the poor in the rest of the world. They do not have the fundamental government recognition of these fundamental property rights. And in a lot of ways, 
Hernando de Soto, the author of The Mystery of Capital, had one of, in one of the few cases where terrorism was defeated because of the Peruvian government's finally recognizing the property rights of the poor. And the Peru was on the verge of a communist revolution. But their government said it's time to get the poor title to their land, title to their cattle, and we recognize it. And it's not like it's already been being done because if you go anywhere in the world, you'll find a certain amount of written or oral records that tells who owns what. If you look at Japan, for example, right after World War II, that's exactly what MacArthur did to the feudal system of Japan and had its reform through land reform and the recognition of fundamental property rights. Once Japan was able to integrate those laws into its civil law, that's when you see the countries really prosper. The libertarians are wrong in one thing, and that's there is an effective role for government, and that is in the enforcement of life, liberty, and property. And yes, I do believe that we need NATO. We need these other organizations because the world has gotten a lot smaller because of telecommunications, because of the rise of the internet, and there will need to be some world governing structure. Right now, it's effectively the United States. There's not a ship in the world that can't move or, a, or a something else without the implicit consent of the United States Navy. If we back out, China comes in. And they're doing it right now through their one world, one belt, one road policy. And in a lot of cases, they have a, they have a society that has state control of capital. But at the same time, they're also adopting capitalist principles to get their people out of poverty. I support people like Milton Friedman of the Chicago School. Oh, yeah. Who, Charlie, he was one of the best economists you've ever had. Yeah. And you'd be best to listen to him, Charlie, because he was uh, one who can get people off welfare, who can get people back to work, who can get our countries moving again. and. What we need, and what, what a lot of people don't realize, is they're not fighting capitalism, they're fighting mercantilism. It's especially... Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, Charlie, that's exactly what it is. The thing is, is that uh, we've had a lot of philosophers talk about the prosperity of the poor. The first one being Adam Smith from The Wealth of Nations. It is neither the butcher, the baker, nor the candlestick maker that gets up for their own benevolence, but they get up to make a living so that they can support them and their families. It's based on their own self-interest and what they have to do. Today, in order to make money, you have to satisfy your customers. And these large corporations did not get big by conniving and manipulation. They do when they go to the government trough to get special favors, but you have to be, satisfy your customer needs, and that's how you get rich. And a lot of these corporations that are that way have done just that. I know I sell on eBay and Amazon, you know, and I'll tell you, those customers on, on those companies, you know, it's amazing what petty scammers you'll have or what amount you have to go through to keep people happy. They have feedback forms. They have the Better Business Bureau. And there's a lot of ways that if you're not, you have to maintain an honest presence online when you sell. David, you look like you have a question. Excuse me, Tim, but the libertarians believe in government. I, they believe in limited government. You were saying you disagree because I disagree the limit because the limits of the government, I think, is a little too much. A little bit too much. I support things like the Clean Air Act and the EPA because they're doing that. We have clean air because of that Clean Air Act. And it was designed in California because of the harmful pollutants coming out of the exhaust of cars, and the only real way that that could be tackled was through laws and litigation. Thank you. Now they cut back. Okay. Charlie, if you would, get, if you would just stand to your head and look at the philosophy of Milton Friedman and, and the Chicago School, the you'd be all set. <laughs> Milton Friedman just it's a necessary you know, part. Sure sure job. Okay. okay. Next speaker, thank you. <laughs> I know. Okay, so. There is an after party. Um, NATO. Uh, 
treaties are really are just a tool and they're no good or bad than the, the country that's uh, signing up for them. World War I is a great example of how treaties uh, uh, drag so many European countries into two, an insane conflict over the death of one god. Great example of how treaties just totally screwed over that part of the world. On the other hand, look at World War II, which is, which is a wonderful example of how countries can come together and work together to, to, to fight a common evil. And I don't think that calling the Nazis or the Empire of Japan I don't think that I'm exaggerating in saying they are were pure evil. So um, I, I think that the, historically there's certainly a need, there's a threat from Russia and with the democracies in Europe there's certainly a need to, uh, to support uh, the, those democracies in Europe against uh, what is a known threat. Um, getting out of NATO I think is uh, uh, would be kind of silly. Uh, regarding uh, regulations, um, the libertarians are talking about shrinking uh, government, shrinking taxes, um, making it easier for people uh, people to make money. I think the devil's in the details. Everybody would love to have lower taxes. Everybody would like to make government smaller, but they're all going to have their little pet projects that they're going to fight like the devil to protect. So how are you going to work through that? I don't know. I, I prefer to see more specifics than generalities. The, the problem with, far, with arguing, with, uh, arguing for smaller government and smaller taxes is that the Republicans love that argument. They love it. Why? Because they're pro-corporation. Okay, those huge corporations that dominate Wall Street, that dominate the economy, they're going to make the money off of smaller regulations and, and uh, smaller taxes. They're going to win. They, they want it. And they're promoting it like they're doing some wonderful thing for the little guy and it's a bunch of BS. So, I... I'm not going to support smaller government until I see the details. Um, plastic guns. Everybody's going nuts over plastic guns. The far right, the far left. Go to YouTube and uh, Google the guy who makes these guns. He's the guy who brought the case to the Supreme Court and watch him shoot those guns. They don't work. And there's a reason for that. It's because you can't make a gun out of plastic. So it's this crazy argument where everybody is scared of plastic guns and they don't work. Now maybe they can shoot off one one bullet and that's about it. But you but for years they've been making pen guns. Before there was even plastic uh, computers and all that stuff. So zip guns. Sure. Yeah. So 100 years ago, there were prisoners making zip guns in uh, in prison, and uh, this is not this is not really a threat. Nobody's going to get shot with a plastic gun. So you know, this is this leads into a bigger thing: is priorities. Is that in my mind, plastic guns? They've got they're shutting down Lakeshore Drive, shutting down the Dan Ryan, doing all these protests over immigration and and guns and gun violence, but but if you look at our budget, 25% of the state budget goes to feeding this insane debt we have over, um, <coughs> over uh, uh, our liabilities to pensions. And nobody's protesting over that. How much of an effect is that having on the lives of human beings in this state? when 25% of our of the budget goes to paying bills that we should have paid 5, 10, 20 years ago. Yep. And our politicians screwed up and nobody's in the street protesting that and nothing's going to change until those people stop getting sidetracked by these smaller issues and go protest in the street 
because of the financial insanity coming from Springfield and from uh, City Hall in, in uh, Chicago. Thank you. I just wanted to say I'm in the Libertarian Party. I think Justin's correct that in a Libertarian or free market system, big companies and corporations would have less power, less privileges. That's because, first of all, in a free market, anyone would be able to go into competition against those monopolies. Anyone would be able to cooperate in order to try to put them out of business, too. And also, the government creates the corporations in the first place. Andy Craig, a libertarian in Wisconsin who ran for Secretary of State, ran on the platform of abolishing that position to stop the state from issuing new limited liability corporation grants, which would have stopped the state from extending legal and financial protections to companies on our dime. Thank you. Um, I think there are some good ideas that the libertarians have, um, but one thing that really hasn't been touched on very much is that there's some really very problematic aspects of the libertarian platform. Um, it would, to my understanding, would basically demolish the social support network, yeah. um, the social um, safety network. Um, there would be no Medicare, right? No Medicaid. Um, and there would be no food stamps or link cards. Um, you know, I work in a nonprofit that would be pretty much almost demolished. You know, I, I, I might, I would probably lose my job as well as a whole bunch of other people. Um, you know, what about the homeless and, um, you know, people, I mean, I don't think there would be any minimum wage. Am I correct about that? Abolish the minimum wage? Yeah. Yes. Yes, the minimum wage would be abolished. Um, which, you know, does have some problems or issues Sweden with it. has no minimum wage. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think that, that I, those things I consider very problematic. I mean, there would be no public education, correct? Or it would be uh, more locally controlled. Okay. Or abolished, depending on the okay. area. Okay, uh, maybe more locally controlled education. is the way to go. Um, there, there might be um, problems. If it's, I mean, um, the Common Core is rather problematic. So sometimes too, too much a centralized control of education is quite problematic. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the poor and the downtrodden um, might really suffer now the libertarians think that oh you know private individuals and companies they're going to give all this money to charity right, so. and and there is you know right now there is a lot of money going to charity i mean um you know i see it every day i, I work in a finance department so i mean but i'm not sure that i don't know i'm, I'm not sure i would trust the, the public to just provide endless help for the um, the downtrodden. So um, there's probably other things I want to say, but I, I didn't have time to think of them. Okay, thank you so much. All right, go ahead. All right. Oh, that's even better. You get to listen to me all night. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention. Minutes. Martha Stout, a uh, psychologist, uh, wrote a book called The Social Path Next Door. And her whole thesis is that uh, one in 25 people is, uh, in a population is a sociopath with basically no ethics, no morals, and no conscience. That's her theory. And, That's her theory. That's uh, her belief. Let me speak. Uh, John McMurtry wrote a book in, in Canada in 1997 called The Cancer Stage of Capitalism. And his thesis also has been borne out by hundreds of other researchers. He says, if you let sociopathic people become billionaires any way they can steal the money, once they get to a certain size, they get bigger and bigger. They're like mindless sharks. They'll defeat everything in sight if you don't know how to regulate them. Uh, a while back, uh, the French had an idea 
they just put up some guillotines. <laughs> and they didn't even bother to send people to prison. They said, we're not paying for you for the crimes you've committed and everything else. You're not going to jail for the rest of your life. They just started cutting heads off. They, they, had, they had their filament of, of criminals looking at people in the street saying, I'm sorry you're starving and dying, but I need my billions. Or back then it was millions. Today we have people, we have billionaire killers running this country. They don't kill with rifles and bayonets and knives. They kill with uh, legal fountain pens. Uh, sign, sign a paper here, medicine that used to be $20 is now $5,000. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry your child is dying because you can't afford the medicine anymore, but I need my billions. It's not personal, it's just business. If we do not address that issue, then we're not going to be able to uh, move forward and get a lot of the, the libertarian benefits of freedom and justice and everything else, as long as you have this one-tenth of one percent of killers hovering over everything running the system. And Trump, incidentally, for those of you that aren't aware yet, he has staffed his administration with these billionaire psychopaths. And nobody alive today has ever seen anything like this in America. So, well, are they psychopaths or sociopaths? Both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sociopath and psychopath, uh, they, 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 they share certain characteristics. This bad language. You can study it. Uh, at any rate, uh, we have to look at the time frame of where we are. The number one issue facing humanity right now is climate change. And there's a lawsuit, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, there's a lawsuit on behalf of some 10, 11, 12-year-old kids, teenagers. They got a lawyer and they filed a federal lawsuit against the U.S. government for stealing their future. And uh, a, judge, a judge just ruled that, that that lawsuit is going to go forward and a lot of the testimony is supposedly going to be heard in October. But these kids, that they, the suit will spell out all the information that Exxon and the others have known about for years that... <clears throat> the website Truth Out and Common Dreams report almost daily now new reports coming from around the world. The ice is melting faster, the, the oceans are warming up faster than what they thought, and the climate scientists are admitting now that their computer models were wrong. Every year they publish computer models of what our climate future will look like, and a year or two later they admit their models were wrong. It's happening faster than what they admit. And now there's a, there's a global consensus that we need a, a World War II type global mobilization to get off fossil fuel if we're going to stand any kind of chance of leaving a viable, livable future of the planet to the kids that are six, seven, eight year old now. If we don't address that issue, all of us, from all different walks of life, then it's no sense in talking about all the other different kinds of issues because none of that's going to matter. So, uh, if anybody's interested in information on this and some authors and books, uh, I'll have a whole series of reference material and everything else here. Three weeks from tonight, August 25th, we're going to be talking about the, some of the famous first responders. Well, like Martin Luther King was a first responder. He was talking about civil rights, human rights. He stuck his neck out and he got killed for it. But others came along behind him and followed him. So on, on many different subjects, there, there's people that are doing good work and they're not being covered by the mainstream media. Corporate media. Don't say mainstream media now. It's, not, it's no longer mainstream. They don't cover mainstream issues. They cover issues that are acceptable to the corporate affiliate. So um, if anybody's interested in what's happening, start using the website Common Dreams. That's Bill Moyer's number one site and a bunch of others uh, that are keeping up on what's happening in the world. The best of the best is posted first on that single site every day, and it goes viral. They're linked to hundreds of other sites. It's commondreams.org, O-R-G. There's another one called Truth Out that posts a lot of environmental issues. And so if you don't have time to read 10, 20 books a week, log on to those sites for a few minutes. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Andy, for helping me out, and the lady, and Tim, and all that. All right, let's thank our speaker one last time. Yay! Both libertarians. All right, I'll use uh, this.
the libertarian document here as my template here. It begins, I see, make no sacrifices for the benefits of others, it begins. I am a secular humanist, but I think the great religious teachers of the world would say that isn't perhaps the nicest thing to say. Is that your philosophy? Make no sacrifice for the benefit of others. Um, Actually, is this the first draft? This isn't the final version of it, I hope. Anyhow, I'll give you some more suggested revisions here. We go to something called cell phone ownership. And I was curious what that, I was curious what cell phone ownership meant. But it means you can go to a grocery store and hopefully whatever you buy and take home would be food. You don't know because they don't have any standards. And you could take something and it's not nutritional, it's not good for you. But that's the rights of self ownership. Also, it means you could go to a pharmacy and you could buy something and when you get home, discover that it's not really medicine. <laughs> It's, you could buy, you could also sell something called Indian Joe's Kickapoo Juice. <laughs> but this is what the Libertarian Party is advocating. Uh, let's move on, boys and girls. Oh, here's a good one here. We must resist all efforts by the government to redistribute wealth. No, we wouldn't want to help poor people now. You take from the rich and you give to the poor. You don't want to have, what a guy comes to you and says, brother, can I spare a dime? You say, oh, that's not allowed. What kind of philosophy is this? Political doctrine is this? You put this in writing? Thou should not help those who are in poverty of circumstance, not of choice. You don't do something collectively to assist them. That's the purpose of a political organization. A organization of people is to help other people. Bullshit. Not turn the other way and pretend it doesn't exist. Okay, and let's move on then. You don't like this one. This one I didn't understand. Please explain it to me. It says their governments are unaccountable for damage done to the environment. Didn't, uh, what, they, didn't they, the lawsuit by the children against the United States government? They have a terrible track record when it comes to environmental protection. I knew the guys that worked on the 50 terrible toxic sites. What did they call them? Super e yeah. you know, And you want to talk, I mean, I didn't see these photos they were showing me. You know, the barrels of who knows what leaking out that these companies are disappeared and you're blaming the government for something I, I don't understand why this is they they had to deal with that there okay let's move on oh I like this this one here this is a great one I love this and I don't know how this would be passed we want all public services should be funded in a voluntary manner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you vote on that one? All in favor say aye. Aye! <laughs> Wait, you believe in forcing people to do things? You know, uh, well, let's move on. My, my dime, buddy. My dime, pal. I've been waiting a long night. Uh, this one, man. 2.9. Oh, no, we got to get rid of licensing laws. So we can, oh, like, remember, you don't know, we had Doc Whitthorpe. He came out of the medical and became a doctor. He had patients. You want to go to some quack? <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'll make you feel. We used to have them here at the college all the time. Alternative medicine guy. The one woman said, if I put, she offered a course, I still remember this. In two weeks, she said, Chuck, for 150 bucks, I'll give you a doctor's license. I'll make that. So why did I go to grad school? That was stupid. Oh, sex work. Wait a minute. Where's the example of the young lady still here? I just looked at the at the laws regarding women and employment. There are real laws. A big Fair Pay Act, Equal Pay Act, a, a leave for child rearing. 
real legislation. You're telling me this, and yet this is all you could think of with sex act. There's so many legislation. I saw the because list. I mean it. Just people? yesterday, I go, wow, there's a lot of legislation regarding women and employment. And this is all you could come up with was sex. You didn't have any. I go, how could they not look this up? Google woman law. <laughs> you get things. Man. All right, let's move on. Health care. Now, this one I don't understand. You guarantee the rights of individuals not have any health insurance. That's good. Thank you. You are preserving my right not to have medical care. I was worried about that, that somebody would force medical care on me when I was not feeling well. How could they do that? <laughs> That's in here, though. Oh, let's go on, boy. Right to discriminate. Oh, this one's even good, 3.5. Let's assert the right to discriminate. Are you guys for real? Is this the 21st century? Have we learned nothing? Have you read not a history book? You want to foster the right to discriminate? Yeah, that's cool against Irish. Let's bring those back. <laughs> Germans, Chinese. It wouldn't last very long. Oh, but we have the new libertarian right to discriminate against people. <laughs> Article 3.5, all in favor say aye. They actually voted on this. Last of all, my dad, uh, he didn't take me to the gun range to learn how to use an AK-47. He took me and he got me a little camera. And he taught me photography. I still remember he took me downtown and he bought me an Argus 50 camera, an automated side tech at the time. And I from, that, that, from there developed a lifelong hobby, which I go around, people don't know this, I go around the United States and I'll spend all day just photographing different cities by myself on my own. The other thing my dad, oh he didn't take me, teach me to the rifle range, but he taught me carpentry. People don't know this. I won a prize citywide as a young man for cabinetry and later on built a soapbox racer. But he didn't teach me, you know, how to write, how to shoot a gun. As a matter of fact, he prohibited me us from doing so. But I guess the guy over there couldn't think of anything else to teach his kid, you know. Maybe if he does, he can call me up, I'll tell him. All right, thanks a lot. Enjoy it. Let's vote on this. All right, thanks, guys. A lot of cool rebuttals. Thanks for having me again. And, uh... I had a good time and I, I had a good, I can't wait to come back. Uh, so that comment I made about guns, I, I, I did misspeak there. I just was, what I should have asked was how many gun owners go out on shooting sprees? That's the question I should have asked. Virtually zero of them do. Most gun owners are responsible people. They don't commit crimes with their guns. There's almost as many oh, mass shootings, that means four or more so four. So four people with guns who usually don't get them legally. No, no, four uh, people kill almost every day. Yeah. Okay. Four people. Die. How many? How many people die in car accidents and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, well, all right, anyways, uh, if the cooks have defrauded or polluted, they should be held accountable. As I mentioned in the presentation, libertarians are for restitution. I don't know much about the Cokes except that one of them was the LP VP nominee in 1980 and a lot of you guys in the room do not like the Cokes. Uh, thank you Jordan for the nice, or uh, Jonathan excuse me for the nice words. Uh, I'm, you know, this kind of like networking and uh, you know sort of stuff is good for uh, building coalitions on the ground and uh, that's part of the reason why I like to come here. Um, I would support prosecuting Trump uh, and seeing him imprisoned uh, for high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, so if he's done something illegal, let's hold him accountable. Again, Trump is not in the Libertarian Party. Trump is not in the Libertarian Party. 
Trump is not in the Libertarian Party. I don't know why you guys are <laughs> railing against Republican. Trump. He's a Democrat. Very I, good I wonder. I don't. I don't get why. Uh, what that has to do with you Libertarian. Uh, Tim Fernando de Soto, good economist. He's an independent. Uh, I recommend uh, the Power of the Poor, Globalization at a Crossroads, Unlikely Heroes of the Arab Spring. You can find all these on YouTube. Just look up Fernando de Soto. All right. Cool. Um, if anybody wants to demonstrate, uh, to do a demonstration, maybe shut down Lakeshore or the Dan Ryan over government debt and pension liability, let's do it. Let's organize. <clears throat> uh, guillotines. Uh, that was a that was a feature of the French Reign of Terror. That's something we should not emulate here in the United States. Uh, a lot of people talking about Wall Street. Um, you know, Wall Street is the uh, collective ownership of the means of production. You go to your stockbroker, you buy a share, you have a piece of the means of production. Insider, Insider trading is a victimless crime. Yeah, right. Uh, Charlie had a lot of things to say. I, I tried to write down as much as I could. Uh, so Charlie said, thinks that without government, people would be poisoned. Uh, why is it in the interest of companies to poison their customers? They have no money if they killed everybody. I don't get why that's in their interest, and I don't get why you think that's the the, the natural state of man. Uh, well, I guess it is, because men, men are awful. Uh, uh, how do you go and help the poor? Is it, if the government doesn't do it, does it not happen? Uh, just because the government doesn't do it doesn't mean that nobody gets any help. Charlie seems to think that that's the only means of helping the poor. And Charlie laughs. Charlie's calling people sociopaths and psychopaths. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Char he, he's calling people psycho and sociopaths. But he also laughs off government force and violence. I wonder who the real sociopath is. If you're, ah, ha, ha, government force, uh, uh, uh. So who's the real sociopath, Charlie? Uh, we don't need to. Uh, how have we not learned from our past? Well, when the government has promised a lot of things, uh, you usually have situations like they had in the USSR and Venezuela. So yes, libertarians have learned from the past. Uh, that is all I have. Come and see Cash Jackson Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., the Piggery on Irving Park Road. Thank you, everybody. Had a good time. What's the Justin, just announce where the nearest red line stop is for that. Oh, it's uh, Brown Line. Brown Line. It's near the Brown Line. Near Brown Line, Irving Park. Okay, just west of, of, of uh, just west of Ashland. Okay. Or no, did I say Irving Park? Uh, at uh, yes, Irving Park. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.